hello, I'm uh, Dave Watson. I'm uh, Director of Woodland Survival Crafts. That's been uh, training people in bushcraft and survival since 1995. Uh, today we're looking at lime bark. Uh, now it's one of the uh, very interesting trees uh, and products from trees uh, in uh, UK and Europe, which uh, I always sort of feel has been like one of the unsung heroes. A lot of people aren't really very aware of the value of lime bark historically uh, and it's you know it's a remarkable material they make these fantastic containers which are lime bark this long thin cord is uh, all of lime bark this is not far off 20 meters uh, of cord here's some that's been sort of processed and what i mean by processed is that uh, this time of year uh, end of May into June, the sap is really high and the bark separates quite readily against the poles. Now that may sound a little bit destructive, taking the bark off trees, but it's all part of the coppice cycle. So what I mean by that is that these trees are stripped of their bark, then they're cut right back, but they will grow again. They will sprout out new shoots and they will grow. And historically, in about a 20 year cycle, uh, this would produce valuable rope making materials for a village. It would produce valuable wood for a variety of products as well. In the Dark Age period, it was one of the choice woods for making shields. But the bark is what we're looking at today. And what I've done to get to this stage, these fibers, these strips were taken off the tree. Then they were rolled up and put into a pond for about five to six weeks. Now, what that does is that it breaks down the sap part of this, bacteria eat away at that, and it produces a rather smelly uh, product initially, but after that period, you can take it out, rinse off any remaining sap and gunk, and you get this rather remarkable soft fiber that will roll and form into quality cord with relative ease. Now I'm just gonna show you that process. So if I take a section of suitable material, and this is first rate material, this lot. This is really soft fiber, very sort of soft hair almost. And I've had a section like that evenly placed, and then I've rolled in the center and formed it into a loop. What I then do is I twist and then swap. Twist and swap. And what I'm actually doing is I'm twisting one bundle one way, but then I'm going over in the other direction. So it's that alternative twisting. And that is what forms up this cord. Twist and over, twist and over and there you form this rather wonderful cord. So this one, this bundle I can just feel is going slightly thinner, but only very slightly. Before it becomes an issue, I'm gonna place this onto that, twist it in, and it's trapped. And then you can add more fibers as you require. It won't affect the strength if you've done it in good time. And with practice, you can do this quite fast. If you were doing long lengths, you would set up uh, a bit of what we'd call a rope walk and you would do it more efficiently still. But this technique I use with young people and it gives them the basic understanding of what twisting fibers is about. So this material here is so very strong. There is no way I'm gonna be able to break this uh, in my hands. And that's not just in straight pull like this. I would not simply be able to break this. There is no way I'm gonna do that. I'll just cut into my hands. This sort of length of cord and this sort of thickness, I would put onto a bow uh, for making fire uh, by friction with a bow drill. And this is suitable. I've also made 
uh, handles for baskets and extended the thickness with this. This could be used for seating of chairs as well. Right, there are other fibres that make fantastic cords. Um, things like nettle. Nettle is a really good one indeed and one of the best. Bramble makes good fibres. Horseradish makes very good fibres. There are a number and it all depends on the context of what you were going to use them for. Some are better for more decorative purposes. Some are very durable and can take the wear and tear. Uh, others are somewhere in between and are good for certain jobs where they wouldn't be so suitable for others. Some just look really nice. The colours, the texture. So it's all about context.